Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of Nick Jukebox of 2015. And today we are starting off with something a little bit special. Now, as you recall, back in last spring, we dedicated an entire episode of Nick Jukebox featuring only the instrumentals. Well, we're kind of going back to that a little bit because this upcoming Saturday is the 10th anniversary of Avatar The Last Airbender. On February 21st, 2005, it debuted on TV, and it became one of the most critically acclaimed not only Nickelodeon cartoons of all time, but animated series of all time. There are so many things that people still praise about it. The interesting plot, the memorable characters, the intriguing world that it's surrounded by. And not to mention, it has probably one of the greatest soundtracks of all time. This happened to be my second favorite soundtrack from a Nickelodeon show. The first being The Adventures of Pete and Pete. So in honor of the 10th anniversary of Avatar The Last Airbender, let us feature some of the instrumental music and we're going to do it from book to book. We're going to start off with book one, Water, and we're going to kick it off with the intro to Avatar The Last Airbender. And then afterwards, we're going to have Reincarnation. Now, this particular song has been featured in numerous episodes. The discussion of reincarnation is mostly focused on the Avatar, in which every time the Avatar dies, he reincarnates into the next element and cycle. And in this case, for Aang, he has been reincarnated as an airbender after the previous Avatar, Avatar Roku, was a firebender from the Fire Nation. And then afterwards, we have plenty of more instrumental music from this amazing show, so here we are with the intro to Avatar The Last Airbender.
And that was Ocean Spirit. Now, this was featured in the season one finale of Avatar The Last Airbender, in which the Fire Nation is taking over the Northern Water Tribe. And this song is featured in the scene in which Aang becomes a water spirit monster, taking down the Fire Nation ships cutting them in half and creating a sense of fear for them to eventually retreat. Unlike in that last Airbender movie in which the Avatar decides to make a giant tsunami. That is nowhere near as impressive. This is definitely one of the best moments that had ever featured in the entire series, and it showed the audience for the very first time on what the Avatar state is fully capable of. And before that, it was the Blue Spirit. And it featured on the episode... The Blue Spirit. Um, in this episode, we had Aang taking care of Sokka and Katara after they were sick. And he's going around finding frozen frogs. But along the way, Aang is captured by Admiral Zhao, and he has to free himself right before he is brought over to the Fire Nation and in front of the Fire Lord. However, not all is lost when a mysterious being known as the Blue Spirit comes and saves Aang. That was until one of the archers was able to shoot an arrow right in front of the Blue Spirit's mask, and it was revealed to be Prince Zuko. It's a really, really amazing episode. Definitely one of the best that featured in Season 1. And before that, it was Agni Kai. And this is coming from the scene in which Zuko and Admiral Zhao fight off against an Agni Kai, or a fire duel. Now, you may recall this song featured on the very first episode of our instrumental podcast for Nick Jukebox. I decided to bring it back again because, I mean... It is such a memorable song from such a memorable scene that it would be a crime if I didn't include it again. And before that, it was Reincarnation. And before that, it was the intro to Avatar The Last Airbender. Coming up, we're moving on from book one to book two. And we're going to kick it off with Azula's theme. Now, Azula was a new character who was introduced in book two. And she happens to be Zuko's sister. Well, we did see little bits of her uh, in flashbacks as well as the season one flashbacks finale, it was the first episode of book two in which we were able to get a full introduction of her, and man does it leave a full-on impression. She is one of the best villains that has been ever featured in any form of media ever, and being voiced by Grey Delisle Griffin, I mean, what can you go wrong with that? And afterwards, we have The Swamp, which was featured in the episode The Swamp, in which Aang is battling against the Swamp Benders. And then afterwards, we got a couple of more songs, so here we are with Azula's theme.
And that was Palace Invasion, which was featured around the last episode of Season 2, The Crossroads of Destiny. Yeah, Crossroads of Destiny happens to be one of the best episodes that have ever been featured in the entire series. In Book 1 season finale, everything was triumphant and was able to defeat the Fire Nation's army, change into the Water Spirit, and being able to win off against that battle. But not in this case. Oh no, it ends on a somber note with Aang being struck by Azula's lightning and Zuko betraying Iroh going over into Azula's in the Fire Nation side and eventually the Fire Nation taking over Ba Sing Se. And it just got us even more excited for book three to come out. And before that, we have the Seven Chakras. This was featured in the episode in which Aang meets up with Guru Patik, and he's teaching him about the Seven Chakras so he can be able to control the Avatar state. And then before that, it was The Chase. And this was featured in the episode, well, The Chase. I mean, The Chase is a really, really hectic episode in which Aang, Katara, Sokka, and Toph are being constantly chased by Azula and her gang. They can't even get a moment of rest. They're cranky, they're tired, they're irritated, and yet at the same time, they can't seem to take a break because Azula is always on their back. It's a really intense episode, and... And it's even more rewarding in which they were able to escape from Azula in the end and get a peaceful night's rest. And before that, it was the swamp. And before that, it was Azula's theme. Now we're about to conclude this episode of Nick Jukebox with featuring songs from Book 3, Fire, the series finale. And we're going to kick it off with Reconciliation. Uh, you may remember this song in the scene in which Zuko finally meets up with Uncle Iroh after he had betrayed him to Azula. Zuko feels remorse and guilt. Now that he has sided with the Avatar in teaching him firebending, he is no longer the same person that we have been seeing in the past two seasons. When he finally goes up to Iroh and apologizes, and he didn't even need to say as much words because Iroh immediately forgave him. That is what makes Iroh such a compelling character, one of the most popular in the entire series. And as well as giving the final hurrah for Zuko. Well, one of the last final hurrahs, but we'll get there. And afterwards, we have Aang versus the Fire Lord. This is the song that features in the very last battle between the Avatar and Fire Lord Ozai. And afterwards, we have a few more songs to conclude it, so here we are with Reconciliation.
and that was Avatar's Love. This, while this song was featured a few more times throughout the series, more specifically in Cave of Two Lovers, um, this was the final song that was playing right before the final episode concluded. We had Aang and Katara looking at, into each other's eyes, and finally the episode concludes with them kissing, and it just brings in a whole bunch of satisfaction. In my opinion, the ending of Avatar The Last Airbender is not only one of the best endings in any show, but also the best ending to any Nickelodeon show ever. If this show didn't exist, I would put in As Told by Ginger, but it even trumps As Told by Ginger, you know, despite all the great moments and great characters. There's just something about Avatar The Last Airbender's ending that just makes it so complete, it makes it so flawless that you can't find any faults with it. Sure, some people would say, oh, you know, the Fire Lord Ozai was defeated by Deus Ex Machina, the Lion Turtle, or, oh, they didn't reveal about Zuko's mom. Well, you know, they already were talked about Zuko's mom in the, in the comic series, and as for the Lion turtle. I mean, I guess you could kind of say that, but at least it was slightly built up. He didn't just get it five minutes into the fight, so I mean, you can't have everything, you know? And before that, it was Peace Excerpt. This is the scene in which Zuko and Aang walk towards the front of the Fire Nation Palace, proclaiming that the 100-year war is over, and that him and the Avatar will start rebuilding the entire nation and fill it with peace. And before that, it was Last Agni Kai. And Last Agni Kai is the song that was featured in the scene, in which Zuko and Azula fight their final fight. And it's a really tense moment, considering about how far Zuko came from the first time he fought Azula, in which he couldn't even be able to beat her once. It's an also a great moment for Katara as well, because she started off as um, a pretty mediocre waterbender, considering that there weren't any in the Southern Water Tribe. But then when she finally learned about waterbending th due to the waterbending scroll and with Master Paku, you get to see another growth and development, and that's really great to see. And before that, it was Aang versus the Fire Lord, and before that, it was Reconciliation. Now we're about to conclude this episode with the outro of Avatar The Last Airbender. I already featured this in a previous episode of Nick Jukebox, but I might as well just feature it again because, well, I'm doing an Avatar The Last Airbender podcast. What else am I going to put in there? And that concludes episode 14 of Nick Jukebox. Um, this coming Saturday, we will be uploading uh, episode 40 of Casual Chats discussing about Avatar The Last Airbender. And I just got to say, um, we've had the most guests in this podcast since our Christmas episode. In our Christmas episode, we have about like nine special guests. Well, this one we had about at least 10 or 11. And it became really crazy. And we talked for over two hours. I think that some of the audio is going to be edited since there was a little bit of glitches and connection issues, but other than that, we had a fantastic time. And also next month, we will be having an episode of Nick Jukebox featuring the songs from Chalk Zone. And uh, this time, I'm going to let you decide. Let me know in the comments down below on what Chalk Zone songs that you want to hear in episode 15 of Nick Jukebox. Until then, this is Patricia from Old Schooling. I hope to see you soon. Take care.